Good morning. Today I wanted to talk to you about uh, moon jellyfish and their life cycles. And uh, today we're uh, standing here in front of the moon jellyfish tank. And uh, so the first thing you need to know about moon jellyfish is that they have uh, three stages to their life cycle. There's the medusa stage, uh, that's everybody knows is the jellyfish. And then there is the um, polyp stage, which overwinters. And then they have a larval stage, swimming from the medusa to the polyp. And the way the life cycle goes is like this. The medusa, uh, the swimming, which you see behind me, the medusa show up in the late spring. Uh, and they grow throughout the summer. And near the end of the summer, um, just the temperature, just before the temperatures start to turn, the uh, male and female jellyfish will spawn, uh, broadcast uh, eggs and sperm into the water, and that, and that creates planula larvae, which is a swimming larvae. And uh, these larvae will swim around in the water column until they find um, a rock or something to attach, a hard surface to attach to. And of course, they, they all spawn all at once, so you get a lot of polyps showing up in one area all at once. Which, and this is key to remember, because I'll come back to this, this later, this issue of a lot of polyps showing up all at once, and the fact that they all spawn at once. So then the polyps overwinter, and during the wintertime, there's a lot less light and uh, less energy in the water because the temperature is lower, and so there's less zooplankton in the water. And the polyps uh, will bud asexually, so the polyps basically make more polyps, um, like as if there were a, a polyp were to grow off my shoulder. Um, you know, they just uh, split. And uh, <clears throat> so polyps make more polyps over the winter, and then come springtime, uh, just, uh, my drink aside here. Just as, um, just as the uh, temperature has been dropping all winter long um, and it starts to bottom out and just starts to tip up, like say late March, uh, March, April, um, that's, uh, just, that's right around the time when the temperature just starts to tick up is when the, uh, the uh, metabolism, essentially the metabolism of the oceans uh, switches on and uh, phytoplankton start uh, reproducing more prolifically and uh, basically you get a lot of more metabolic activity happening in the oceans because there's a lot more uh, food in the water essentially, more nutrients and more energy in the water. And so what happens is because of all this metabolic activity you have higher levels of iodine in the water. Why I don't actually know um, specifically, that would be a good thing for you guys to research why the iodine levels uh, spike in the early spring. But uh, jellyfish breeders, believe it or not, there's such a thing as jellyfish breeders, have discovered that um, by forcing polyps to uh, overwinter, like by putting them in the fridge and simulating a winter time, um, and then giving them more water changes and more food, and then adding some iodine, Lugol solution specifically, you can cause the polyps to start their reproductive stage, and that's the last stage. So again, late, uh, late winter, um, or excuse me, uh, late spri uh, spring, temperatures just starting to climb back up, iodine levels just start to tick back up, and your polyps, which are essentially a miniature anemone, uh, just a couple of millimeters tall, um, they start to go through a process called strobilation. And strobilation is where the polyp becomes elongated and then it starts to look like a stack of pancakes, or a better metaphor would be like a stack of snowflakes. And the snowflake on top of the stack is pulsing, and it's attached right in the center. So picture a stack of uh, snowflakes, like on a pin. Um, and the one on top is uh, pulsing, but he's still stuck, and then pop, he pops off, and then swims off, like a swimming little snowflake. Uh, and that's the baby Medusa, also known as uh, Ephyra. And so the Ephyra then grow up, and here comes the warm season, the temperature's now climbing, and uh, uh, they grow up into Medusa, and you know, male and female uh, jellyfish then spawn, late summer, the whole cycle recurs again. Now this goes back to what I was saying earlier about why you get a lot of, um, I was saying earlier, how you get a lot of polyps being created all at once, because the Medusa spawn all at once. Well. <clears throat> why is this significant? Well, this is the reason why um, when people are swimming, say, late August, September, July, um, why there are swarms, you know, quote, swarms of jellyfish um, in the ocean. You won't just see one or two, but you'll see tons of them, like, covering the water. And uh, the reason for this is all the polyps in the springtime, 
were strobilating at the same time. And since jellyfish are essentially plankton, they just get blown around like a cloud uh, with the winds and the currents. And so they'll generally stay together. Uh, so that's uh, today's video about jellyfish life cycles. Uh, and maybe next time I'll talk a little bit about um, why do our, have our moon jellies here lost their sting? Moon jellies have nematocysts, which have neurotoxin in them, just like these things. But why do they lose their sting after only two generations of breeding them in captivity? Think about that um, for next time. Thanks.